Hello, Scouts. It's Mr. Kugler, and we're back. And we're going to be trying some Dutch oven cooking that I'm willing to bet you haven't seen before. And this is a product that is manufactured by Camp Chef. It is called a Dutch oven dome. And this is a fireproof fabric tent that has reflective surface on the inside. And again, it's fire protective. It has a hole in the top center to let heat escape, two handles on the edge, and it's made to go over your Dutch oven. So why might we need a device like this? Well, in some parts of the country, at certain times of the year when there's a high fire risk, when you go camping, you're not going to be able to use charcoal, definitely not a ground fire. Uh, out of fear that you're going to create a, uh, a forest fire. So how can we go and bake while we're camping without, and using our Dutch oven, without having the ability to use charcoal or a wood fire? So this device here actually gives us the ability to do it. So besides this tent that goes over the top of the Dutch oven, and you'll notice I'm using my larger Camp Chef stove. I'm not using my smaller uh, propane stove because I wanna have plenty of space around it. Again, all these things should be used following the manufacturer's recommendations. But my Dutch oven, which is my 12 inch regular, and this is all cool, is sitting on a deflector plate. And you'll notice this deflector plate has some holes in it and this will sit over and this will prevent the bottom flame from coming directly in contact with the bottom of our Dutch oven and deflect some of that heat up and inside of our tent to help create that convection action that's gonna give us top heat and bottom heat and the heat from the side, the things that we need uh, to have in an oven. So one of the other things I'll show you right now is what I'm gonna do is because I'm I want to be careful with that heat coming from the bottom, that it's not going to be directly on the bottom of our, in this case, shortcake. What I'm going to do is I'm using one of these cooling racks. And these are great. They've got little legs on them. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep my pan. I'm going to be using a lid from a trail shaft container. It's gonna keep my pan up off the bottom of the Dutch oven and help create convection also within the Dutch oven. What if you don't have one of those little racks? Well, one of the things you could do is ball up some aluminum foil and make three equally thick, notice I flattened it out a little bit, equally thick balls of aluminum foil that you could place like a three-legged stool underneath your pan, to help create that airspace underneath your uh, pan within the uh, Dutch oven. So that's a little trick. You certainly could also use three similarly similar size rocks uh, to fit underneath, or stones, excuse me, to fit underneath it as well. So why don't we do this? We're gonna get on making our shortbread uh, that, uh, a shortcake, uh, strawberry shortcake uh, biscuit uh, that we're gonna make up using some Bisquick. So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna change some cam camera angles and we'll get to making the strawberry shortcake. Does it need to be strawberry shortcake? It can be, and that's what I'm gonna be making today. Uh, I'm gonna be making two biscuits uh, to make a strawberry shortcake, actual cake, a double layer cake for a family event. But if you were camping and you didn't want to go through the trouble of washing and cleaning and cutting and taking the leaves off of the uh, strawberries, you could certainly use raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, and create your own shortcake uh, using this biscuit recipe uh, that's made for shortcake. And I'll talk quickly about what that is. I'm using Bisquick and online they have a recipe on Bisquick uh, that takes the Bisquick mix. This was two and a thirds cup of uh, Bisquick mix, which is a all purpose baking mix. I added three tablespoons of sugar. And then what I'll be adding is a, uh, and I've written it right on top of my 
bag so I know not only what's in here, but what to add. So if I'm out in the woods and I forgot to bring the recipe out, um, I know I need to add to this quantity a half a cup of milk and three tablespoons of melted butter. I've also taken and already prepped the three tablespoons of melted butter and also labeled it so I knew what it was. And although I didn't actually have to keep this refrigerated, I like keeping my butter refrigerated and I did. And I had to refrigerate the milk as well. Now, when I use the milk, I've got a Nalgene bottle here and I know I have 12 ounces. I checked it before. There's the measurements on the side. So when I go to add my half a cup of milk or four ounces of milk, I know I need to take it from 12 down to eight ounces on this bottle, and I know I'll have my four ounces in it. I certainly could have used a measuring cup, but that's one more item that I need to wash, uh, and uh, this helps me reduce the cleanup while I'm in the woods. I'm also using this smaller Trail Chef pot to act as my mixing bowl. And one of the reasons why I did that is uh, a short while ago, I went and I melted the butter. I had another quantity of butter uh, made up and I melted the butter in here. This is cooled down enough, but the butter is still liquefied. I had it on top of my lid upside down on some Dutch oven gloves so I didn't damage my cook box here. But I'm using the same pot that I heated the butter in uh, to be able to mix the ingredients. So why don't we get going on that? And uh, I'm gonna move the box away. I'm also going to use some of these food surface gloves because at some point here I'm going to have to mold out the biscuit uh, with my hands and although my hands are clean I want to be sure that I don't create any problems so I'm going to use these gloves. And I'm going to start with the four ounces of milk so I can mix it well with my butter. So that is right at eight ounces. So I know I have four ounces of, of milk inside my container. I'm gonna keep, I have a cooler down below here. I'll take, put my milk in there for now. I may need that, I have a little extra. And I'll take and mix up, mix the butter in with the milk. And now what I'm going to do is Remember, I took the Bisquick mix and I added the sugar in advance so that way I knew I had everything I needed uh, inside here and I didn't forget anything. Now I'm gonna just take and incorporate the liquid ingredients with the dry ingredients. This should come out to be a very doughy type of a, you know, basically batter. And what I may need to do here is work it with my hands a little bit. Another reason for having these gloves on, almost like a bread dough you would need, but this we're just trying to make sure everything's fully incorporated. So I'm gonna reach in there. Oh, that's looking good. So now my goal is that when I'm done baking this, I'm gonna be able to get it out of this Trail Chef pot lid. Notice I said my goal. So we'll see how well I do with that. So I'm gonna take off to the side here. And I gave that a nice coating of canola oil. And now I'm gonna take that biscuit and I'm just gonna use my hands, and I wanna to try to get this equal thickness. Not only so it'll make a nice cake layer, but I also don't want to have uh, trouble baking it evenly, where I have the center part maybe is really high and that's raw. Meanwhile, the outer edges are uh, burnt. So that's my goal. So here is my nice biscuit for my shortbread, all formed out in the bottom of this bowl. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
switch up and preheat my oven over here with the tent on and we'll get ready to put this thing in the oven. Just like when you normally bake in a Dutch oven, you wanna make sure that you're preheated your Dutch oven because that mass of that Dutch oven, especially in the winter, the time that it's involved to bring that up to temperature could be a little while. So I've done that, I brought it up to temperature. I have my burner on my Camp Chef stove down to uh, just lower than medium heat. And I'm gonna have to play around with this and watch it. And a lot of things become a factor, how windy it is, which it is very windy today, uh, outdoor temperature and everything in terms of how hot it is underneath what your cooking temperature or baking temperature is underneath. Certainly when I go to do my second uh, biscuit in here, I may have some residual heat in the Dutch oven. I'm, I obviously won't need to uh, preheat at that point uh, and we'll be able to play around with it. But it's gonna be one of those things where you're probably gonna check it a little more frequently than you normally do. So why don't we get started? I'm gonna remove the tent, put that down over uh, someplace over here. I wanna be careful on the grass. So I have it elevated on my Dutch oven stand down here. I'm gonna use, I have my gloves on. You use a lid lifter and bring my lid down onto a lid stand. Remember, I've got the grate in here that's gonna keep my biscuit up. And I've got a nice pair of tongs or pliers here, uh, scouting ones that are great. Notice I'm gonna take and go backwards, what may appear to be backwards on my grip on that, because if I went the other way, my hand would have, the pliers may have been in the way or come in contact with the side. So I just did that. I've got it centered in my Dutch oven here. I'm gonna go put the lid back on. Give it a little spin to make sure it's sealed. In this method of cooking, we're not gonna to have to spin the Dutch oven periodically. I'm gonna put the dome back on and uh, just keep an eye on it. Check it every five or 10 minutes. This normally would take, I bet, around 20 minutes. We'll see how far it goes today uh, with the conditions that we're dealing with. So we're at about the 15 minute mark. And one of the things that I learned about using this is that you can take the lid off for biscuits to be able to brown them up on the top. And my bottom is getting, almost smells a little burnt. It's difficult to try to control the heat here. So what I'm gonna do is I just took the lid off and I'm going to cook for another couple minutes with the lid off and see if that browns up the top for me. We'll find out in a couple minutes. So we're 18 minutes in and this thing is looking great. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to get this off the heat I've got uh, off to the side here, uh, someplace to put it. But the top round up nice. Try to show that to you. We'll see what the bottom looks like. Um, I'll be able to get this separated. But that's our, our shortcake biscuit. Um, one of the things I'm gonna play around with, this is uh, you know, new to me as well, because where I'm from in Connecticut, I don't have to worry about a lot of the concerns in other parts of the country with burn warnings. Uh, so I don't do a lot with the dome. But where else could I use this? Perhaps it's a campery and in the morning I wanna be able to do a hungry man breakfast. Or I think what would be great would be like the bratwurst one pot dinner uh, that I have another video on that has potatoes and carrots and onions and the brats on the top. If you're worried about burning on the bottom, you could add a little water. So it's, there's some great opportunities to use this dome tent uh, in, a, in a camping setting. Again, I'm using the bigger uh, Trail Chef oven. First of all, it's the same brand. I know they're made to work with one another. Uh, and that's what I see on the manufacturer's website when they talk about using it. So think about ways that you could bake or cook uh, using one of these domes and expand your Dutch oven skills and, and have fun with it. So I'll sign out now and, and uh, hope that you get out there and enjoy cooking and enjoy expanding your horizons a little bit, even if it's with a different weird way to Dutch oven bake.